Tai ką, sveiki visi, kas prisijungėte. Tikiuosi, neturi techninių problemų, kas turi gal garstės prisijungti vėliau. Šiandien su mumis svečiuose Proofpoint verso klientų vadybininkas Baldijos šalise Elijas Halme. Hi, Elijas. Elijas, hi. Hello, hello. Aš esu sutis. Ir aš kesutis iš Bluebridge, geresnis į sistemą inžinierius konsultantas. Kaip žinia, elektroninis paštas yra kanalos numeris vienas, kaip šiandien dienai kengsmingas programinis kodas patenka į mūsų įmonės ir organizacijas. Taip pat ir įsilaužė iš išorės. Nors pas Proofpoint nėra labai gerai žinoma Šepus Atlanto, tačiau Gartneris pripažįsta kaip vieną iš lideriančių gamintojų pasaulyje, elektroninio pašto saugumo srityje, kas svarbu pagrėžti, kad tai yra specializuotas gamintojas, kuris dirba ties elektroninio pašto sauga ir visos jo produktų portfelis ir ekosistemą sukasi apie tai. Ir Proofpoint iš tikrųjų turi tai, ko mes matom, trūksta labiausiai pas klientus, tai ir efektyvius saugumo prasme produktus, Taip pat yra, turi įskirtis į elektroninio pašto programas tam, kad vartotojai galėtų lengvai ir greitai pranešti apie incidentus. Taip pat turi įrankius leidžiančius administratoriam mąsinio fishingo kampanijų metu ištraukti laiškus iš visų vartotojų elektroninių pašto dėžučių, ką mes dažnai pasidom, kad nėra galimybės ir kilo hausas. Taip pat saugos pareigūnams, įgaliotinėms vėlgi įsikirti turi produktus leidžiančius treniruoti fishingo platformas visų savo organizacijos darbuotojus ir gerinti atsparumo socialinį inžinieriją bei kitų produktų. 2019 metais mes į Bliubrižą gaudavom kreipinių saugumų incidentų iš klientų tokiam temom. Tai retas būdo, kad klientas patenka jauduosius spam sąrašus ir prašo šios pašalinti problemus dažniausiai būdavo susieto su tai, kad nėra bazinio elektroninio pašto saugumo apsaugų. Tačiau buvo ir kreipinių, kad, pavyzdžiui, praeido phishingas, jo tai 365 elektroninio pašto dėžutės ir klientai tikrai būdo nustebę, nors naudodavo ir planus Microsoft'o E3 ir kitus ir tai rodo, kad apsaugos yra neefektyvios. Taip pat turėjom ir užvaldytų OFI 365 paskirų, Tai čia pagrindinė priežasis iš tikrųjų būdo tai, kad vartotojams nėra įjungtas kelių faktorių autentifikavimas, kad šiandien dienai, jeigu jūs naudojate Office 365 ar Google Suite, yra bazinis minimalus saugumo lygis kiekvienam vartotojui, turinčiam elektroninio pašto dėžutę tai įjungti. Taip pat turim su incidentais, kada buvo vykdomas finansinis sukčiamas didelių mastų ir kalbo saidavo apie 100 tūkstančių eurų pervedimų, Tai ir vėlgi neefektyvės apsaugos Office 365 ir dviej, bet tam tikrais atsiais išgelbė klientą visiamos patirtis ir taikomos procedūros buhalterinėms skiriui. Kas yra svarbu paminėti, kad apsaugos debesų paslaugų tiekėjų, kas siūlo Google'as, Microsoft'as iš tikrųjų efektyvumų didelį nepasižymė. Yra ir trečių šalių tyrimai, kurie rodo, kad tie fitimo skirtumai kartais yra net ne procentais, o kartais. Ką kalba apie grėsmes, ne ką mes matom, ką Gartneris įvardina, kalbant apie elektroninio pašto saugumo grėsmes, yra trys pagrindinės teikingsmingo programinio kodo patekimas, kaip prisiektukai organizacija. Čia dažniausiai susiję su šifruančio programinė įranga jos patekimu. Kitos dvi dydžiosios bėdo atsivardėjimas tai yra netikri laiškaino įmonės vadovo matoma Lietuvoje ir Office 365 paskirų perimas teišingą takų pagalbo. Taigi, kaip matyti, paskutinės abi grėsmės susijusio su teišingu. Ir ką sako pasaulio Lietuvos statistika? Tai pasaulio statistika čia mes turim porą gerų žinių ir interneto saugumo grėsmių ataskaito 2019 metų teigė kad teišingų atakų paskutinis keturis metus nežengliai, tačiau mažėja, tai yra gera žinia. Antra gera žinia yra tai, kad teišingų atakus vis rečiau ausmogė dėgėlioms įmonėms ir organizacijoms, bet vis dažniau ausmogė mažoms ir vidutinėms. Tai rodo, kad įrankiai ir priemonės yra, 
veikia didelės organizacijos taiką. Mes Lietuvoje iš tikrųjų patenkam daugiau tą mažą vidutinį segmentą. Tačiau turim ir vieną blogą žinę. Situacija Lietuvoje, kibernetinio saugumo centro stebėjo ir kasmet pateikė taskytas. Tai 2016-2018 metais nors kibernetinio saugumo centro skaip išingo atskiriai neišskiria. Jį kartu pateikė su socialinės inžinierės skaičiai. Tačiau nuo 2016 100 tūkstančių, 2017 188 tūkstančiai, 2018 250 tūkstančių socialinės inžinierės incidentų. Tai Lietuvoje tai auga. Ir phishingas, kaip žinia, phishingas jau taikomas skirtingai, tiek technologiškai, tiek psichologiškai, į skirtingus organizacijos vartotojus ir grupės. Vienai patakojami Vienai patakojami įmonių vadovai, kitaip patakojami vadybininkai, asistentai, trečiai buhalteriai ir personalo darbuotojai. Daugumą elektroninio pašto sprendimo žvelgia vienodai į visus elektroninius pašto adresus ar visas pašto dėžutės. Tačiau Proofpoint mato tai kitaip ir apie tai šiandien papasakos svečias ir partneris Elijas. Viso webinaro metu galite užduoti klausimus į kuriuos atsakysim klausimų sesijui pabaigoje. Taigi, Elias, now it's your turn. Taigi, aš sūtis. Let me share my screen. Can you see my screen well? Still no. One second. Yeah, yeah, there are some lag. Good. So thanks. Thanks, first of all. It's great um, for me to present our, our uh, being part of this webinar. Um, my name is Elias Halme. I work as the account manager in Baltics. I'm originally from Helsinki, Finland. Uh, I work in our EMEA HQ just outside of London, been working here for over a year, really liking what we do, how we solve the current um, cyber threats and um, great to do this webinar with with Bridge, our Lithuanian partner. Personally, I've been really happy with Blue Bridge. The level of professionality and, and quality is, is immense. So what I will do today, I will explain, go through the current threat landscape. Um, I will then show what organizations are now doing and what maybe should be done differently, resetting the industry. And then um, I'm obviously going to explain our people-centric cybersecurity and how we solve the current problems and the threats organizations are seeing. So if we take a deeper dive to current threat landscape, the main thing is it's characterized by humans. It basically means that human, humans are targeted, not infrastructure any longer. And there's no single threat actor that dominates. Uh, well, there's the MOT at peak. Besides that, there's no single threat actor that dominates. It means that the uh, threats nowadays are highly targeted towards people and individuals. Second thing is that there's human activation behind. It means that the cyber criminals want people, users to take an action in order to succeed. It might mean opening a link, opening a URL, opening an attachment, handing out login 0365 or other login credentials, or simply pay uh, for someone who sends in a fraudulent email, no malicious payload, just fraudulent email asking for payment or, or information. Third thing is that if there's a manual, um, something manual that the receiver must do, the human who receives threats, so it's on the other side as well. It means that the bad guy, the cyber criminal, all also has to do something. So there's manual action, human interaction on both sides, on the receiver's end and also the sender's end. So all in all, the current la ra threat landscape is fully characterized by humans. Interesting fact here to point out, as you can see at the end of the curve, threats go down because it's actually Christmas time. 
So we see actually that uh, the bad guys are also celebrating Christmas and not sending uh, threats when it's Christmas holidays or New Year's. It also goes down for the summer because apparently cyber criminals like to spend summer holidays as well as we, we do, we good citizens. So that is the current red landscape, what we see. If we take a deeper dive about what's happening, so it is characterized by both business email compromise and email account compromise. Business email compromise means that someone pretends to be you. I would say uh, I would say Nordics and Baltics most typical uh, example would be the so-called CEO mail. Someone spoof a CEO's email uh, address, sends an email to the finance department and asks to pay a bill immediately. And unfortunately, quite often organizations pay and afterwards notice that it was a fraudulent mail. Uh, the number on the right hand side is, is in the US from FBI. It's a big number of money, uh, but that's only the reported number because some organizations don't want to report these cases because then they would might uh, face other uh, payments or, or fines in the form of GDPR breaches or so. So that is the one thing um, with, uh, with the email. Someone is pretending to be, someone is spoofing your email. The other thing is that someone actually becomes you. Someone does a technical compromise on your account, becomes you, and moves that way laterally inside the organization, or then spoofs, uh, spoofs the um, employees, colleagues, and in the bigger ecosystem as well, your business partners. That is actually the worst thing. If, if someone is pretending to be or is you and spoof is your uh, business partners. So that, that is, uh, this is a huge problem for organizations globally, I believe so. For you as well, you are seeing, seeing these fraudulent emails coming from left and right. Second thing is that there's two types of organizations, those that are already in the cloud and those that are on their way to cloud. It also means that there are those that have been breached and those who are yet to be breached. We see that customers who have become our customers, 45% uh, of these organizations have had compromised cloud accounts, which is a staggering huge number. And why it, it is a problem? Because this is the way the bad guys, the cyber criminals, want to come in and penetrate an organization. What they want to achieve is a persi persistence login in order to create persistence so that cyber criminals can achieve their goals whilst they get into the organization, they breach the account. Usually, if they breach an OC0365 account or other cloud account, they create a new users for themselves, so called ghost users, in order to create this persistence. Um, persistence uh, login. They send fraudulent email. They do internal business email compromise. If I would receive an email from my colleague from his or her account, I would definitely believe and probably take an action. And of course, in a bigger ecosystem for business uh, the partners as well. Um, whilst they get into our 365 account, it's easy to uh, exfiltrate files, emails, and set that data out. And, and this is what they are doing actually at the moment. So cloud has created a completely new attack vector. The attack chains are quite long nowadays and are quite complex, but the fact is that they start with an email. That is what I want to point out here, that the attacks target start with an email, even though they are quite long, the attack chains. And all, quite a big number of all the threats are hosted in, in Microsoft's environment. And bad guys, actually, cyber criminals have all 365 themselves, and they try, they do all, all pen testing on, on Microsoft's environment and all 365 to understand what works. So basically now we've gone through the current threat landscape. I, I want to put it in a nutshell. So three things that we see basically. Threats use social engineering, not 
vulnerabilities in the organization. 99 times out of 100, there's human interaction on successful bridge. Move to, moving to cloud, shift to cloud has created a completely new threat vector. And email fraud is a massive issue for companies of all size. Um, for instance, to give a perspective, I'm a, a big fan of football and basketball. So in football, uh, Lazio named uh, team in Italy bought a player from Feyenoord in, in, in Netherlands, Stefan de Frey. They paid the uh, transfer fee without $2 million. Um, someone spoofed uh, Feyenoord's email, sent an email to Lazio that can you please pay the 2 million euros for this account? Um, in the payment information has changed. Um, Lazio paid the 2 million euros and after two weeks someone asked where is this 2 million euros gone? In Reading, where we have our office, same thing happened to a junior small club and that company, that club just vanished because they couldn't, they didn't have the financial backing in order to survive from this attack. So just to give an example, Email fraud is a, is a massive problem for companies and organizations of all size. Good. So now we walk through the current threat landscape that is characterized by humans. Um, I'm going to concentrate a bit more into email and just a bit make it a bit more interactive. Um, I want you guys to uh, guess when the, or if you know, all the better, which decade was the first email sent? Was it in 1960s? 1970s, 1980s or 1990s? Um, I give you a short uh, moment here to think. Right, okay. I think that's good, good enough. So actually the first email was being sent in 1971. So 70s is the correct answer here. And what makes it interesting is that email is so old invention, but it's still characterized in the current threat landscape. And that is the, the, the uh, avenue bad guys are actually using, uh, cyber criminals are still using. So according to Gartner, um, these are the numbers organizations usually put their security spending and it kind of makes sense. You probably as an organization want to secure your network. Um, after that, you want to secure your endpoints and of course web surfing as well. And that has maybe led to the fact that only 10% of, of budget is put to email. Whereas according to Verizon, sorry Verizon, 94% of breaches start with the text targeting people with email, which is incredibly incredible number. So basically, if you could block 94% of all attacks, that, that would already be quite a good um, cybersecurity strategy. Other thing is, is so-called insider threat. Um, there are two type of insiders. They are malicious and non-malicious. Malicious are the uh, bad apples, the uh, rotten eggs in the basket who uh, maliciously are breaking compliance or, or rules. And then there are so-called non-malicious insiders as well who uh, are not being compliant without probably understanding it. So these, these two are provi providing this issue. So 96% of all breaches start with people and of which email is by far the number one threat vector globally. So what, are, what do organi organizations do nowadays? So kind of the old school idea is to secure the um, um, physical infrastructure, the physical traffic, putting up firewalls, secure the data, secure the traffic. Whereas nowadays the bad guys have realized that is secured, they're gonna focus on people, the human error. And people unfortunately have made this quite easy. There's a lot of information available in internet that bad guys use. Um, social media, the worst. Um, for instance, in LinkedIn, many people give thorough explanation, explanations about their work roles and their titles and what they do. And the criminals use this information. They know which one they should target, who has the access to information they want to get their hands into. Um, 
so they, they, they leverage this information. So they literally go to LinkedIn, they check um, who, uh, who is responsible for what, and then they know who they should target and try to breach the account for. Then it's time to explain what can we do differently? What do we do in order to uh, help organizations and help their, uh, secure their people? So at proof point, we talk about VAPs. VAPs stand for very attacked people. In current threat landscape, it's important, very important to understand who are your most attacked people. Now, every organization probably have list of VIPs, very important people, but it's important to understand who are being attacked uh, because then you know who needs to have a stronger password policy, who needs to change password more often, who needs an MFA, whose um, personal webmail needs to be isolated, whose browser, is browser surfing, web surfing should be isolated, and so forth. So how do we do it? First, we show who are being under attack, who are seeing threats in the organization. Um, this might vary from high volumes of attack, like brute force attack on O365 that we see a lot, all the way to very sophisticated um, attacks sent, sent at right time at the right person, really hard to detect. We understand and show who are vulnerable in the organization, who are likely to fall to those threats they are seeing, people who click on everything that moves, very click happy, people who are not well educated when it comes to security awareness training, and then also using risky devices um, and, and um, um, cloud applications that IT doesn't want them to use, third-party applications. Third thing is privilege, who repre represents risk to the organization. And this is very interesting, and this is something that usually surprises. Um, it's who has access to business critical data or any data that the bad guys wants to get their hands into. For instance, we did a POC, proof of concept, to a, a big French company, and their very uh, most attacked person was a person responsible for fire, fire alarms because the criminals wanted to know when they have fire alarm drills so that they can sneak into the buildings. And this was a big surprise for the IT. They didn't have any um, visibility or understanding for this. So this is the VAPs is, is the bread and butter, what we do. And we actually do it in our um, sandboxing solution. So this is the dashboard of our sandboxing solution here. First, you see this is the, where you see a very attacked people, the very attacked uh, VAP dashboard. First, you see the attack index. This attack index, uh, the number comes from the idea of how, what kind of threats and attacks these pair people are seeing. If it's something very typical seen all over the world um, a lot, then the score is maybe lower. When it is something very sophisticated and rare, then the attack index goes up. You see what kind of threats they are. We have the best threat intel team in the world. We also see most B2B emails and B2B threats. So we have a very uh, unique um, view to threat landscape. The biggest companies in the world are our gateway customers. So you can actually leverage the same information as our customer, so you get more information about the threats. You see how many VAPs you have against average users, and why this is important. I said you 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 can use this information to know who needs an MFA, who needs a stronger password policy, who needs to be educated, who needs to be isolated, and so on and so forth. Back in the days, CISOs probably probably. Or, or infosec managers have had to go to board management and show that we are under attack. Really, you need to understand this. Whereas, gladfully, many organizations nowadays, the board are much more awoke and realize this, and they actually need you to show them and give information about the, about the threat landscape your organization is is, is seeing. And this information is, is golden for that use. 
when it comes to cloud, you see who has had suspicious logins to their all 365 accounts. You can force an action. If there's a breach, you can force lockdown or password change. Um, you see risky third party applications, all 365 uh, gives with the 08 token quite a solid backdoor to the organization. And of course, govern the data in the cloud as well is the third thing. Now, MFA is a good start, but there's some uh, legacy protocols that bad guys use in order to breach the organizations like IMAP. So that is what we do. Then I'm going to give you a short peek on our portfolio, which is quite uh, quite a lot. I try to explain it shortly, but wisely. So what we see, what we do is that first we protect your people. We talk, protect your users. We protect the number one threat vector that is email by blocking known threats, blocking new threats, and pulling malicious email if it comes weaponized after sending. T mark is important. It's in incredibly important to authenticate your email domains. And if you don't know if you have done that, you can speak with Bluebridge, of course, but this is important because people and organizations nowadays authenticate pretty much everything. But it's incredibly important to uh, authenticate your email domains so that you see who is sending email in the name of your domain, because this is what criminals do. They check in MX toolbox or any other website if company has an a DMARC record on, on, a, on a domain. And if not, then they want to spoof that domain and spoof your business uh, partners. Second thing is securing internal email. If, if someone gets email from a colleague, secure that, that it's not malicious. Secure cloud accounts um, so that they not, cannot be breached and personal webmail, isolate that as well, because if you have if bad guys can't get through the your business email, they highly likely would use Gmail or other personal webmail solution. Your users will always remain as the last line of defense. It's important to train them and educate them so that they, they can defend themselves, but your organization as well. And creating a loop of detecting and responding we have a solution that when your users receive a malicious mail, they can click a button that then draws that mail automatically, not only from that users, but every user who has received the same mail. So we always want to create that. And that's why we have adaptive controls on the right hand side. If something happens because no one can stop 100%, that's why we have adaptive controls that take action if we detect something. Uh, blocking data. Uh, uh, moving out from other email or, or cloud, isolating risky users with their browsing. And of course, as well, I've mentioned the insider threat. So zero trust access providing secure um, login for users who are outside of your organization, uh, um, say consultants, for instance, they have access to only that part of your network. They need the ac access to, whereas we, VPN provides the access to everything. And insider threat management as well, the 2% I mentioned, having the endpoint activity and, and, uh, and, and kind of having the eye on those that there are no internal insider threat uh, risks. So basically, we protect your people from threats, we enable users to protect themselves and, and your organization, and we protect the data and people uh, as well. So this is what we do. It's quite a handful, but this is maybe better exp explanation about the portfolio we have. So we we secure your users, uh, we block threats, we protect the access, we protect your information, and we help you with compliance. That is proof point. Now we've been talking a lot about email uh, because email is the number one threat vector, and your focus definitely should be on email because phishing attacks and and, and uh, fraudulent emails without any malicious payloads, everyone is seeing them a lot. This is um, anonymous data from a POC with a with a pro prospect who became a customer. They received during POC, they received 624,000 emails. And what we do first are gateway blocks by IP reputation. That already a, quite a big chunk. 
After that, it's content that kicks in. If the spam fish more were a bulk, we block further amount of emails. So these are the known traits. This is the gate we're working. The next thing is the sandboxing, which is important because we're seeing more and more sophisticated attacks. So first we uh, do the attachment detonation and the URL rewriting. When the receiver receives the email, we rewrite the URL. But again, when user clicks it, this is very important because many most providers only do it when a user receives it. And then the bad guy can change the link and they don't check it when user clicks it. We do it when rece receivers get, it, get the URL, when they click it as well. These are the targeted threats, the very, um, how would say, how would, how would I say, very harmful ones. Um, so all in all, we blocked nearly half of, of the emails got through. And you, you, you don't have to take my word for it. If you are interested in POC, please speak with Bluebridge um, because we we are, have the big best efficacy and and I can say whatever I want to say here, but the fact is that we prefer and love doing POCs for two, two three weeks in order to show how we do this. Um, we can sit behind your existing solution. Um, we can show what they slip through, what they let go through, and also give the uh, visibility about your VAPs. So the efficacy, blocking more, and visibility, giving more, much more insight about how your organization is being attacked. Couple of words about Proofpoint. I always put this late, last because I, I I rather speak about how we do things than how we are as a company. But of course, this this I want to share as well. Um, we're the most trusted partner to to protect the leading threat vector of email. We're the most deployed solution for the Fortune 100, 1000, and 2000 global 2000 um, because we have the best technology, and we will have so in the future as well because 25 cent of every euro, dollar and, and pound and kroner, whatever is being put to our R&D, our research and development, which means that we will stay number one in the future. That is really important to us. Um, we're the only big one focusing on people, which is interesting since current threats target people, not infra. Gartner is important. Um, I think I guess Tutis mentioned that as well about something about Gartner. So we're leader in the in the main areas in the Garner and in Caspi. Also, um, I believe we went directly to a leading challenger. Um, so looking forward to move there as well to leader space. Um, we provide also seamless integration with other next generation leaders in order to provide a very effective uh, um, cybersecurity strategy for for all the organizations. So that was my my half an hour, I believe, and um, I didn't get my technical counterpart for this. But uh, if, the, if the, I would rather happy to take any questions you might have, um, if there are any questions. <coughs> Užpildyti trump atsilepimą apie renginę. Klausimų pabaigoj. Turėtum atmatyti bandram, bandram chat'e. So, thanks Elias for your presentation, very good presentation. My uh, pleasure. One more, more question to today. We talk a lot about uh, cloud email security. Office 365 exchange online. It's maybe good to mention that Proofpoint fits to all email cases, on-premise, hybrid. Yes. Yes. Yeah, so, if, for instance, gateway, gateway can be be um, in as a virtual machine machine deployment, application deployment, or cloud deploy, uh, deployment. Our um, email gateway. Okay, I don't, I, I don't see any additional questions. Stay. Thanks, Elias, for your presentation, for your time. I should be sending you the questions. It's a key to from pay and cater. Keep us galetin and keep a car booty dargeres. You're the QSQ, 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 you're the QSQ